What's up guys, I'm Phoenix Master one and welcome back for some more Fire Emblem Heroes and this is going to be my comprehensive analysis and review of the Ascended Legion banner which features Volk, Tanith, Marcia and also Astrid. So I'll be going over the builds that you can run on these units for different game modes like Arena, PvE and Aether Raids and I'll also go over my opinion of them and how you can use some of the skills like Lethality for example on other units. If you do enjoy these comprehensive banner reviews, I would really appreciate if you could burn that like and subscribe button just like Legion. And with that said, let us begin. Ascended Legion is easily one of the best bow cavaliers in the entire game because of her power, speed and her deceptive bulk thanks to her weapon Flame of Muspel. So this weapon functions quite similarly to her original version's Weapon Refine where it benefits her when she has got buffs on herself and punishes the enemy if they've got visible buffs on themselves. So this allows you to get a lot of stats and just with her rouse attack speed 4 which she has in her base kit, she can essentially get plus 6 to all of her stats quite easily with this weapon. So this weapon gives her minus one special cooldown which means that you can have a 2 turn Deadeye, 1 turn Moonbow which is really fantastic and if she's got a visible bonus active on her then she can get plus 6 attack and speed and then she can basically have 50% of the total bonuses on herself and the foe into her stats. And if the total bonus is 10 or more then she can also get partial null follow up. So this is pretty easy to get with the rouse attack speed which she has got. And it's not really the hardest to buff up an ally with a tactic skill or something like that. And visible buffs are pretty common in general. So even if she faces enemies who have a lot of visible buffs, she can easily make use of this weapon. And this allows her to be really bulky and really really strong and fast. And a lot of popular tanks are going to be having follow up negation. Which means that she can make use of the partial null follow up built into her weapon and still double them. Ascended Legion doesn't have the utility which Cyan Leaf has got with that Kanto and Urine Seal but what she has is a lot of stats and a lot of power thanks to this weapon. She actually doesn't want to run a lull skill because the nature of her weapon actually wants the enemy to have the buff so that's why the Fortress skill which she comes with is really really good skill on her and keep in mind that you can always use Wind Sweep on her because of the partial null follow up built into her weapon. So Ascended Legion ends up being a really strong bow cavalier with absolutely amazing offenses 39 base attack and 41 base speed and she can also get really physically bulky with this weapon even though she doesn't have the highest defense stat. And rouse attack speed 4 is actually a new line of skill that not only gives you visible buffs but also gives you the null panic effect. So this is really exciting because Legion's weapon does want her to have the visible buffs and panic is one of the annoying things for weapons like these and the null panic just completely protects her from that. But keep in mind it's not going to be as easy to use in something like Aether Raid's defense because units are going to be beside each other. So on turn 1 it is not going to be giving anything to you in general. So you can use other skills to buff up Lake Yarn and not completely depend on her rouse attack speed 4. The Null Panic is certainly really good but it can be a bit hard to stay alone at times to activate this skill. Especially at the start of a map where you're just going to be starting beside your allies most of the time. A lot of people might want to fodder her off for this new skill but personally I would like to wait for the oath variant of this skill because it is going to be a bit more easier to use and I think that fodder skill is probably going to be a lot more incentivizing for many many people as a fodder. Now if you want to build up ascended leg yarn then keep in mind that she's an ascended unit so she doesn't use any kind of florette to get an ascended asset. So you can easily get one for free and I personally really like the speed ascended asset on her as it is going to be a super boon. So this is what I've given to my own leg yarn and if you get the attack boon then that's even better. So on a budget you can just give her blade session and have moonbow as it is going to be a one turn special. And you can also run wind sweep on her slot B and this could be useful especially if you're going to be using her in like an abyssal map or for beating chain challenges where she needs to be healthy. So wind sweep gives you the double attacks but still doesn't let the enemy counter attack her because of the partial null follow up in her weapon. We have seen this kind of interaction so many times so Lake Yarn can easily make use of this. And attack speed catch 4 is also an option for slot A which does work in both phases and it does give you more offensive throughput. So if you just want to maximize your offensive prowess then this skill is an option especially with blade session which can also give you plus 9 attack and speed. She can be used in Aether Raid's defense and I think that this is pretty much her best competitive usage because a lot of units, a lot of players are going to be using the visible buffs especially in the light and dark season where people do use Peony and Peony can easily provide those buffs and Legion is going to be loving to face those opponents with her weapon who have got a lot of buffs. 
so you can run her with Wind Sweep. I'm not the biggest fan of a trace skill on defense because it can definitely mess up your AI movement. Wind Sweep is just a lot better and it is going to be helping you in matchups against Brave Hector for example who might just kill Legion with that bonfire. So having the safety of Wind Sweep is going to be really nice for annoying those kinds of opponents. But unfortunately Wind Sweep is not going to be working against Ascended Fee Arm uh, who does have Null Counter Disrupt built into her weapon. But still, Legion doesn't have the worst matchup against Fiorm from what I've seen and calculated myself. She's not going to be able to kill Ascended Fiorm many times with this kind of budget build, but at least she will not be dying herself because of her speed and because of her bulk. So that is going to be a bit of a stalemate of a matchup, but still at least it's not going to be a complete loss against a lot of the low invested Ascended Fiorms. Her matchup against Ascended Fiorm is actually a lot better than you might think at first, but keep in mind that Legion does have a lot of speed to deny her double, and she also has a lot of bulk, so she can actually survive hits from Ascended Fiorm pretty easily because of her physical bulk. If you want to invest heavily, heavily into Legion, then ARD attack speed just provides her with so much offensive power, and you can also run Fatal Smoke to make sure that you can just stop the healing of Mystic Boost Hector or Ascended Fiorm herself, who can also get healing. And Blade Session with ARD attack speed 4 makes her a really really threatening unit to tank because she has got the partial null follow up and she will punish you if you try to buff yourself up. So she makes for a really formidable Aetherate's defense unit that I'm sure we're going to be seeing quite a lot. And if you want to use her in Aetherate's offense then in my opinion she's not going to be as good as Cyan Leaf but still she can function with that trace skill so you can use her for hit and run and basically use her for the far trace skill that she comes with. So a budget build is going to be doing you fine. Finally, if you do plus and merge her, then she's going to be a really, really strong unit in Arena, especially because visible buffs are just so common there with the rally skills, and she's going to have a field day with that preferred weapons of hers. She can run Deadeye, and this does become a two-turn special, so she can actually trigger this in a single round of combat if the enemy does not die and can retaliate back to her. And you don't really need to change too much in her base kit. You can maybe try to have another slot C or a slot B skill, but she does fine with her base kit, even at this kind of merch level. Volk is easily one of the strongest dagger units in the entire game. Even though he is a red dagger unit, he is actually really strong because of his solid preferred weapon and the fact that he's basically the best user of Lethality, the new special that we have got in Fey. It's a lot similar to Deadeye with how it can cut through the damage reduction, but its damage scaling is actually a lot better than Deadeye with how it cuts through the bulk of the opponent, similar to Black Luna. Its cooldown is actually 4, so that makes it pretty hard for pretty much most units to use it consistently, but not for Volk because of his weapon, Fireman's Hook. So this weapon gives him minus on special cooldown, making Lethality into a 3 turn special. And this weapon is always active in the player phase. If you want this to be active in the enemy phase, then he needs to be solo. So if that condition is met, he can get plus 5 to all of his stats and he can also get the null guard effect and also get the special acceleration on his own attacks. So this means that he doesn't really care about any kind of guard opponent and he's going to be having a free special acceleration to just charge up his lethality and attack them. So this makes him one of the most consistent Lethality users because with Time Pulse, Lethality becomes a 2 turn special, so he can easily trigger that on his second hit. The Null Guard effect and the Special Acceleration is a very very strong combo because you're not stopping Wolf from charging his special and annihilating you, so that is definitely one of the things which makes him a really really powerful unit. And also his base attack is really high at base 41, so he hits incredibly hard. Even if a blue unit is tanking him, he's still going to be doing a lot of damage to them with his lethality and his attack stat. His speed is also really high at base 43. He has got super boon in both of these and even though he's a really really good unit himself, he is still like a good fodder because of lethality and the fact that he can inherit time pulse at the same time. Now unfortunately because of lethality being a 4 turn special, it's really hard for a lot of units to practically use and consistently use especially. So there are just few units who can make use of Lethality really easily compared to a lot of the bow units who can easily make use of Deadeye. So here are some of the best examples of Lethality in my opinion and the best users. So if you have extra bulk then these could be some of the powerful options that you could consider. The first option is Kaze. He has recently got a weapon refine and he's basically like a worse bulk in a sense because he also has the special acceleration in his weapon but does really have the anti-guard effect that Volk has got. So he could be an option, especially if you're a big Kaze or a Fates fan. 
And Yuri is pretty much one of the best dagger units himself. And he's actually better than Volk in my opinion when it comes to the utility in Aetherate's offense. So foul play, his Kanto, his extra movement is just insane. And Lethality could be an option to pick off some of the enemies which Yuri is going to be struggling many times. So this could be an option against many of the really really bulky opponents that might not die to an AoE special of Yuri. And that's why Lethality can come into the play for picking off that really bulky Farsafe unit because Lethality just cuts through their bulk. So the more defense that they have, the more damage Yuri is going to be doing. So you can easily run this kind of build on him and you will need some support to have this pre-charged. So Raphael is a pretty good unit for supporting Yuri in general. And Infantry Pulse is possible on Raphael if you run a 2 plus 5 on a slot A. So that could be done. And pre-charge Yuri with Lethality can be a really nice counter pick against many of the teams. Yuri is just really insane as a unit. So obviously he's one of the best users of Lethality. Soth is also an option because of the mini Special Spiral built into his weapon. And once you run Special Spiral on him, then he can basically have Lethality at one cooldown after each combat. So he can definitely work, but definitely not going to be as good as Yuri or uh, even Volk in my opinion. So yeah, Lethality's 4 cooldown is going to be a bit annoying to the point where units a lot of times could compete with running 4 turn AoE specials to just get similar damage output. So that can always be an option. Uh, but Volk himself is the king of lethality after all. Volk's base kit is super amazing so you don't really have to change too much. Blade Session Sacred Seal is going to be giving him the extra speed because Sturdy Impact doesn't really give him any kind of speed. And if you want to use him for clearing a lot of the in-game content, then you can run a double life and death special spiral build. And uh, Volk has got the anti-guard and the special acceleration in his weapon. So it doesn't really matter if he's facing an enemy with guard effect, which is often an annoyance for many of the... Uh, conventional AoE uh, mages like Ophelia for example. So Volk is not going to be having that kind of problem. And he also has good attack stat to run a build like this. Life and Death is required because the AoE specials do calculate damage based on the visible attack stat. He can also be using Aetherate's offense but he's not going to be as good as Yuri because he lacks the utility. Yuri is still going to be a lot superior but Volk can definitely be run if you want to set up Gale Force because believe it or not Despite being a red unit, he can still kill Note pretty consistently with this kind of build and fall into the Wings of Mercy range of his allies to just continue the Gale Force action or just have a lot of dancers come in. So you can run him with Fury 3. You can also run Sturdy Impact but Fury is a lot better just so that he can take the recall damage to fall into the Wings of Mercy range. Disarm Trap is going to be a necessity in Aetherate's offense. So this could be an option for sure if you want to set up Gale Force with him. There are definitely other options as well who are going to be a lot better guild for setup units but Volk is also a very strong unit because of lethality. I think Volk is a lot better in Aetherate's defense than he's in Aetherate's offense because in Aetherate's defense he can hunt down stuff like Ascendant Fear Arm and especially if he's run on a Bridal Catria team then he's triggering lethality on his brave hit and that is incredibly incredibly strong. So even against like a plus in Brave Hector from what I've calculated he still does so much damage because at the end of the day, Lethality is pretty much like Black Luna. So it doesn't matter that he's facing a lot of blue tanks. He's still going to be just doing so much damage to them and easily killing like the low invested once. So Bridal Catria team makes him into a very scary unit that I personally definitely never want to face because, because he doesn't even need to pre-charge his Lethality um, and just use the Brave Hits. Now of course, if you use him outside of a Bright Catria team, then you could try to have him with a pre-charged Lethality and that can be also really really scary. In general, he's going to be a solid unit there and uh, even though he doesn't have the 3 movement of Yuri, I think that he's a lot scarier to face uh, than Yuri for Aetherite's defense. And finally, if you do plus and merge him, then he can also be a really solid unit in Arena because he doesn't really need any kind of dual skill and he can just run Sturdy Impact to get more power and bulk. And his base kit actually works even at max investment. Tanith is a sword flyer and she's the instant demote of this batch which means that she's not available as a 4 star focus unit and she was not even given out as a free reward like Balthus or Violent which means that she's incredibly hard to pull but if you still get copies of her then she can function as a decent merge project in the 3 star 4 star pool. Unfortunately she doesn't have her sonic sword instead she's got Steadfast Sword Plus which is basically a non-seasonal version of Card Cudgel Plus from Spring Bartray. So this weapon gives you extra attack and defense and neutralizes your penalties in those two stats. Now the thing about being a sword flyer is that she doesn't have too much competition in the 3 star 4 star pool. There are only handful of sword flyers that she has to compete with 
And all of them are older sword flyers. She's got a lot more attack and defense than Resplendent Cheetah. She of course does not have Wing Sword which has aged decently well and can still function with uh, that Flashing Blade Weapon Refine. But compared to Pala, she has just got so much better speed and pretty much trumps Pala in every other stat. You can also compare her to Summer Fiora who is a Grail option and she also doesn't have a preferred weapon. And obviously Tanit being the recent unit is going to be having better stats. Tanit definitely beats these two units in one aspect which is in Arena because she can reach 180 BST and she doesn't really need a dual skill. So if you're looking for a 180 BST flying unit in the 3 star 4 star pool then Tanit could be an option. In the premium pool there are going to be a lot better sword flyers who can function so much better at unmerge but Tanit is basically the merge project option in the 3 star 4 star pool as a sword flyer. And if you're a fan of Tanit then she can be a pretty decent unit and has a lot of options because of this kind of stat spread. So she does have base 36 attack which is not the highest in recent times and that's unfortunately going to be a big deal if you're trying to use Heavy Blade Sacred Seal on her for Gale Force because unlike Resplendent Shida, she doesn't have access to Flashing Blade. She does have a super boon in her speed which is pretty good as it is and she does have workable bulk and is going to be decently bulky at max investment. Tanith is mostly the kind of unit you use at max merges in my opinion or at high investment but if you want to use her on a budget then you can just keep her base kit, have a support skill in Slotzy and just have Moonbow and Blade Session to increase her offenses. Now if you want to invest heavily into her then Steadfast Sword is definitely an option if you cannot have access to Unbound Blade Plus which is locked behind a 5 star unit. So you can run a build like this with attack speed catch 4 and speed defense near trace with speed defense rain. So this is again to maximize her attack and speed. And with this kind of build when you're stacking up so much speed, you can definitely go with the plus attack IV even though it's not a super boon. You can also run unbound blade plus and in my opinion that's a really really strong weapon on a flyer because they do not have access to the lull skills which is built into this kind of weapon. So she can have even more debuffs with that near trace skill and the rain skill and just stack all of them and you can run a solo skill just to synergize with the solo condition of the weapon. Definitely a hard weapon to get. Unfortunately for the swords there are not too many options. There's no Plagian variant of a sword. There's no its curtains of a sword. And Instant Sword could be an option if you want to use her in the player phase with some other player phase options like Surge, Sparrow and Flow Refresh. This is basically going to be giving you a bootleg null follow up. Flying units cannot have access to that skill but with the combination of Instant Sword and Flow Refresh you can basically have that in the player phase. Because Instant Sword has got the impact effect and Flow Refresh has got the partial null follow up to bypass the follow up negation skills. And with a 2 turn special she can easily be healthy with Surge Sparrow and then healing up even more HP with Flow Refresh. So this is the kind of self healing player phase build if you're interested in that. Unfortunately there are not too many sword options but this is definitely one of them for the player phase. Now Neither Raid's offense her role is basically restricted to that of a Gale Force Wings of Mercy unit. But here you definitely need to focus on her attack stat because triggering Heavy Blade is a really really big annoying thing. Especially if the opponent has got something like a duo peony. So she can run a build like this. Sling Edge is basically her best option to make Gale Force into a 4 turn special and you again have to invest heavily into her attack. Tanith can be used in Arena and this is the place where she beats all of the other sword flyers because they have to run Ardual Flying 4 in their slot A. Meanwhile Tanith can already reach 180 BST after her first merge so she doesn't really need any kind of dual skill. Which means that you can just stack up her attack and speed by running an actual slotty skill like attack speed catch and have unbound blade plus which is going to be really useful in arena where people do run visible buffs. And you can run guidance to just improve the mobility of your infantry and armor units and make use of the flying class type of Tanith. You have to run a 300 SP slotty skill because Tanith does not have a preferred weapon so that is required to get the max scoring. So unfortunately you cannot run a rain skill on her slotsy for arena purpose if you want to have the max scoring. Astrid is a green bow cavalier with Damiel bow as her preferred weapon. So this is basically an upgrade from Annette's crusher because this not only gives extra movement to an ally who has been hit by a rally skill from Astrid but it also provides them with the bonus doubler. Now keep in mind that this weapon's effect does not work on ranged cavalry units. It's completely allergic to them to the point where they're not even going to be getting the bonus doubler. Um, so this weapon does nothing for those ranged cavalry units. But for any other class type this is definitely going to be helping them with the bonus doubler effect 
and also the one extra space movement. She can also get plus 6 attack and speed if she's above 25% HP and her offenses are actually not that bad. She has got 39 base attack and good 41 base speed having super boons in both of them so she can definitely pack a punch herself and also support her allies with Damiel Bow and also providing them with the rally support. So this kind of weapon definitely incentivizes you to run a dual rally skill and also running a Ruse skill so that you can support your allies even more by debuffing the opponents. She does have speed defense bond 4 in her slot A which is honestly not that good of a skill on a cavalry unit because they usually do not want to be near an ally and because of their mobility they're pretty much going to be behind or ahead of the rest of the units. So a solo skill or a cat skill could have been a much better option uh, but I guess they had to put a speed defense bond 4 on Astrid. So she's mainly going to be functioning as a support unit and a unit that you're going to have to watch out whenever you're going to be facing her because she can increase the movement and also make that unit super strong with that bonus doubler. Especially if the unit that is going to be getting the rally buff has got some kind of tier 4 Rao skill who does provide them with an null panic effect like we have seen on Ascended Legion. So they can just protect themselves from the panic effect and that is a huge thing uh, when you have bonus doubler as an effect on you. You can also use her with Ashera who can provide the null panic support to the allies who are going to be receiving the bonus doubler effect. So that is another way of utilizing her support. It's worth noting that bonus doubler effect that Astrid gives does stack up with bonus doubler built into certain preferred weapons and if you're running that in your slot A. For example, Ledry Marth and Note have got bonus doubler built into their weapon. So if they get bonus doubler status effect from Astrid, it actually stacks up with their weapon so they can have even more stats. And if, you know, someone has got bonus doubler slotty skill and they stack up Astrid status effect, then they also have double bonus doubler. So, so it does stack up and can definitely be pretty powerful with those kinds of units, especially like Note, who's going to be present on every dark team. If she gets bonus doubler on top of her preferred weapon that already has bonus doubler, she can definitely get pretty strong but at the end of the day you're going to be at the mercy of panic and lull skills if you rely too too much on any kind of visible buff. Astrid already has rally attack defense plus so you can run the other two boosting skills so that she can be a full buff bot so resistance tactic and speed tactic can be run and if you want to invest a bit more into her own combat then you can start by replacing her slotty skill with something expensive like attack speed catch 4. And you can run a Fartray skill so that she can also retreat after using the Rally skill or after attacking. It really depends on if you want to use her for combat more or for her support. But a Trace skill with the Rally skill like I said does work out as she'll be able to retreat. And Deadeye could be an option because her damage output isn't really all that bad with that base attack. So it could be an option but it is going to be a 3 turn special. If you're just trying to use her on a budget then you can try to have Fury 3 as her slotty skill and just the Rue skill in general. And if you want to use her in Aether Raid's offense, then a build like this can definitely help you, especially in the Astro Season, by having a 4 movement dragon with that Kanto 3. So that is going to be amazing utility, and Astrid could be used for that purpose. And this can also be run with some other really good hit and run units, like uh, Brave Erika, for example, who's just really, really strong. So she can be used as a support unit in Aether Raid's offense for some really interesting plays, especially hit and run uh, with units who already have Kanto. You can also use her in either its defense so that she can come forward and rally up a unit from the back line. Keeping her in the back line in my opinion is the best case use because you do not want Astrid to just go and attack an enemy. Instead you want her to rally a unit like Bramimon for example. So Bramimon could have 3 movement and that could be really threatening along with a bonus doubler. So that's an option and you can run some kind of buffing skill on your team so that they can benefit more from this bonus doubler. There's no Regan here with Panic, Smoke, so you can buff up allies in the Dark Season a lot easily than the Anima Season. The extra movement provided by Astrid along with Bonus Dubber can definitely catch people off guard, especially with the Pathfinder of Note, so that's why I think that she is best used in the Dark Season. If you do Plus and Merger, then she can be used with G-Dual Cavalry 4, and she can just be an amazing support unit providing that Bonus Dubber effect. You can use a skill like Attack Speed Rue so that it's a lot more universally useful if you're running some mages on your arena core. Otherwise, her attack defense rules is just fine. Marcia is a Lance Flyer with Unbound Lance Plus, which is a non-seasonal version of Flowing Lance Plus, which was present on Pirate Geese. So this is a really, really good option present in the 3-star, 4-star pool now. And this weapon was previously really hard to get, and this is definitely one of the better in her double lances. 
She has got a stat spread really similar to that of Tanith. They only have few points of difference in their stat allocation. So their builds and functionality are kind of similar. Um, so here, Marcy also has the speed super boon. And she does have workable bulk and attack as well. She does provide us with speed defense gap 3 at 4 star, which was not previously available. But unfortunately, Fury is available at 5 star. So that's a bit disappointing, as Fury is a lot more universally useful skill. So Marcia does have competition with other Lance Flyers and there are a lot more Lance Flyers to compete with Marcia than there are Sword Flyers to compete with Tanith. So here are some of the comparisons. Um, Seteth is still going to be a really good Lance Flyer option because of his Spear of Asil and the fact that he's pretty unique with that preferred weapon, providing that support to his allies and also having the dull attack speed uh, built into his weapon. So Marcia here is going to be faster than Seteth but set it at the end of the day is going to be having much better support. Dihorba basically has a bit more resistance than defense compared to Marcia and has got a bit less speed. So Marcia can still be a good option because she is a newer unit, but as we move on into the game's lifespan, if you do get a Lance Flyer like Seteth but with the new BST with a preferred weapon, then they might be able to stand out a lot more than Marcia, but still, she can be a decent merge project option if you really like her. She does have that speed super boon, so that's pretty much the ones that people are going to be going for. And compared to Tanith, she does have a lot more options when it comes to her inedible lances, and they're also a lot more easily available. So the first budget option is as old as time with Fury Desperation. She already comes with Fury, so might as well use that. And Unbound Lance is a really good weapon on her base kit, so you can just speed refine that. And if you want to invest a bit more into her, then you can run a cat skill with a Neo Trace skill. Again, similar to Tanit's version, she just wants to stack up a lot of attack and speed and just focus on her offenses. And you can also run Springy Lance Plus, that's also a really good option. It's not really locked behind a 5 star unit, but it's locked behind a 4 star seasonal unit who's not going to be present all the time. So Springy Lance is an option to just boost her offenses even further. And Surge Sparrow could be an option if you want to mainly use her in the player phase, but also have some kind of healing. Marcia's defense isn't really all that bad, so she does appreciate that healing to stay healthy. Marcia can run a better ninja weapon in Ninja Naginata Plus in my personal opinion because she can get access to the true damage which is really good with a dive bomb build because Marcia needs a lot more damage output than she needs speed from something like Ninja Yari Plus. So she can run this ninja weapon with a player phase build having dive bomb so that she can quad attack and get the true damage and just focus on her damage output. You can also use Marcia in Arena, and she's not going to be requiring a dual skill to reach 180 BST, so that's an option, and that can just allow you to run an actual slotty skill in Attack Speed Catch 4. So Unbound Lance is of course going to be a pretty fantastic option in Arena with all of the rally skills, and she can basically function similarly to Tanith in Arena with this kind of build. Marcia can be used in either its offense as a Gale Force unit with its Gardens Plus and Quick and Pulse Secret Seal. So this can bring down the charge of Gale Force to 2 and this allows you to trigger it in a single attack with Heavy Blade 4, accelerating your special. So this is really good, especially when you're using some AoE specials or Savage Blow with your main initiator Gale Force unit. So you just need to attack once and just have your Gale Force charged up and then attack another unit. Now you definitely want to focus on our attack stab because we're trying to run Heavy Blade here and it's definitely a bit harder to activate especially when people are going to be running Saros all the time in the Anima Season and she does boost the attack of her allies. So that is going to be my banner review. Make sure to share this video with your friends who are trying to build up any of these units on this banner. And uh, if you enjoyed, then make sure to leave a like and a comment helps me tremendously. And if you really, really enjoyed, you can always support me directly by using Super Thanks or by becoming a YouTube member down below. And for more Fae Analysis videos, make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell because YouTube sub boxes are about as functional as the quest which could have given us a free Tanith. So that's it, I'll see you guys next time. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day.